So, Yapindra, I'm really excited to catch up with you here at Mobile World Congress. And I mean, first and foremost, we got to talk about the new brand. I think it was July last year when Amphenol acquired Comscope's outdoor wireless and DAS businesses. And now the new company has a solution in the market as Andrew and Amphenol Company, right? Just tell us about the transition. Yes, we are very excited. Uh, like you mentioned, the outdoor wireless networks and the DAS business back in the day comprised of Andrew. And for people like me who actually joined Andrew 20 years back, this is very nostalgic and very exciting. So it's good to be able to go back to the brand Andrew and it's good to be able to go back in a company that is high tech, that is growing fast and is willing to invest so that we can grow even further. So Open RAN, huge theme here at Mobile World Congress, but most of the discourse is around Open RAN for outdoor macro networks. I'm really interested to get your take on the applicability of Open RAN to indoor environments, uh, enterprise areas, large public venues, that type of space that are traditionally a little underserved by carriers. So, you know, what lends uh, itself from Open RAN technology stack to that type of deployment? Yeah, so considering that majority of the cellular traffic is consumed indoors, our focus in Andrew has always been making sure that there is enough indoor connectivity and strong indoor connectivity. So Open RAN allows us to actually create a reason as to why that in-building connectivity can be expanded, right? I mean, you're right. I mean, a lot of times when people think about uh, ORAN, the context is outdoor, right? But what we see is if you apply the technology for indoor, and by the way, when I say indoor, I'm not just talking about building like this. I'm talking about venues, campuses, stadiums, any area that is confined, I'm calling that as an indoor. So if you think about the focus, like you said, so far has been on the outdoor side, so far has been on the big venues, but a lot of times schools, colleges, parking lots, are just underserved when it comes to cellular, and we believe that ORAN actually brings that opportunity to serve that market. And as Open RAN has matured, you know, we've seen a lot of great progress on the standard side, a lot of interoperability work done, and we have really market-ready, hardened solutions. And even when we think about, you know, where did Open RAN start? Oh, started in greenfield outdoor networks, right? So a lot of these indoor environments, they are in a lot of ways greenfield, right? So this is a, a good match. But I want to hear about it from the user side too. If I'm the venue owner or the enterprise, you know, Open RAN different from traditional cellular, right? It's a lot more IT-like, maybe a lot more user-friendly, but maybe just take us through the benefits that the end user would see from this approach to in-building connectivity. Fantastic question. Uh, when you think about our customer base, we have large public venues, we have enterprises, and we have operators. So if you think about the benefits for all these three segments of the customer, for large public venue, actually the benefit is pretty straightforward. With the use of ORAN technology, we are able to save them tremendous amount of space. I mean, we are talking about 80% space savings. So there is an immediate capex saving for them. We are able to save them tremendous amount of electricity savings because we don't have to power up the bulky equipment and then cool it down. So there is a very straightforward saving for, for venues, space and electricity. But again, you bring up a good point. For enterprises, which could be 50, 100, 200,000 square feet buildings, the benefit is actually for decades, they have been used to Wi-Fi. They're used to standard off-the-shelf servers. So with the open air technology, we are able to load our software on the COTS hardware and give them the same benefits so that they can actually use their IT teams to be able to deploy that. And then obviously for the operators who have been pushing for mix and matching of the different types of OEMs, they get the best of innovation coming from different OEMs. Okay, so you get optionality, you get CapEx savings, you get OpEx savings, and you get a, a really strong end user experience. And I guess if we look historically at the midpoint of a G cycle, that's when we start to see in-building investment ramp. We're roughly at the midpoint of the 5G cycle. So do you think the sort of nexus of these trends would suggest that we might see a ramp in in-building build out to using open RAN technology? Again, uh, that's a great thought process because you're right. In every G cycle, the, the macro deployments will start first, then it will move to the in-building, then it will move to densification. But where we are right now, in the middle of the G cycle, about 2025, what we are seeing is the large public venues conversion and upgrades will continue, 
but what we see is the enterprise market picking up both for public uh, networks as well as for private networks and that's where we see a lot of new requirements coming up for inbuilding and what we see is ORAN is going to be that impetus for enterprises to go invest in it use the familiarity with Wi-Fi and quad server and drive the cellular as the fourth utility for in-building deployments. Excellent. Well, it's a great brand story. It's a great technology story. And I really appreciate you taking the time to share it with our audience. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for uh, letting me share the story.